Right, we are going to look at now actually applying some of these ideas of the worded questions that we've got here, okay? Previously, we've looked at drawn diagrams that have already been done for you. We said that you have to draw on the reactions and the weights, and then there are only two things that you can do in a moments question. What are the two things you can do? Resolve, Resolve and... Yeah, take moments. There's only those things you can do. You can resolve and you can take moments. And that's all it's ever going to be for these questions, OK? So I've picked two people, one from each class. I've got Rayhan and Luke are having fun on a uniform seesaw of mass 20 kilograms. Rayhan weighs 70 kilograms and is 10 meters from the pivot. Luke is 8 meters from the pivot. The seesaw remains horizontal. It is a huge seesaw. It's 18 meters long, this seesaw. It is. Because this is a wild and crazy fun weekend that you're having. <laughs> so, um, who is the pivot? Looks like Luke is slightly closer to the pivot, so I'll put the pivot here. And Luke is going to just be represented as... Yeah, it did say Fuad, you've got to cross it out and change it, because I changed the names and didn't change them properly. So this is where Luke is going to be over here. And I don't know Luke's mass, so I'm going to put his weight is mg. But I do know that the distance from here to here is 8. And I've got that Rayhan's mass is 70, so his weight is 70 g. I could write Rayhan here, but I'm not super bothered about adding that on. And then there's some other forces that are missing. What else do I need to add on? The, the, yeah, I need to add on the, the weight of the seesaw. It's 20 g, and where's it going to go? OK, so where's the middle? Not at the here, so it's just before. So there's going to be here, 20 g, and that distance there is 1, because the whole thing is 18 and it's halfway there. So it's not even a real-life seesaw. Right? I don't know where Rayanne and Luca found this seesaw, but it's 18 metres long, and it's not even got the pivot in the middle, so it's, it's gone a bit weird, strange. Uh, there's something else that's missing. Yeah, oh, the normal reaction, because... If you were that seesaw, if you were the beam, remember we're always pretending that we're the beam, you would feel a weight pushing down on you here, you'd feel a weight pushing down on you here, you'd feel your own weight pulling you down, and there'd be this horrible pain in your beam back pushing you upwards like that, okay? Um, yes, Sufian. So one of the things we could say, if we were going to resolve in the up and down direction, we can see that the normal reaction is 70g plus 20g, plus mg. But I question whether this is the best thing to have done, first of all, because I've got an unknown here and I've got an unknown here. So I wonder if that's necessarily the best place to take moments about, uh, to, do, to do. I wonder if that's the best thing to do. I think there's a better thing to do, which is obviously to take moments. Where would you take moments from, Mr. Kier? I would just always do it from the middle. You shouldn't always do it from the middle. That's not right. Anika? Um, if you take it from mg, you would not include the mg. That would be zero. And remember, oh, we're trying to find the reaction force. So yeah, yeah. perfect. We'd take it from mg. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was thinking we were trying to find out what mg was. And I was about to tell Anika she was completely wrong, but I didn't even read the question. So we're going to find the reaction force. So yeah, definitely mg is going to be the best place to take it about. OK, um, so we're going to take moments about Luke. OK, I'm going to take moments about where Luke is. So we're imagining this is the place here that we're taking moments. I don't need to include this one. Which um, are the two that are working together here? The ones here and here. So I'm going to have 70g multiplied by what's its distance? 18. Good, 18. Plus 20g multiplied by? And that is equal to? R multiplied by? 8. So we've got 8R here. So I've got 70 times 18 and 20 times 9. I mean, I probably could do this in a shorter way, but I have my calculator in my hand, so who cares? And so R is equal to 180G. Have I done that right? Hams is my calculator checker. 1764 is with the, the, with, that, yeah. without the G. But I'm just including the G in there just because you can either do it um, with G staying in or you can multiply G out. If you multiply G out, you'd have to round it, wouldn't you, to two or three significant figures. But I'm happy just to leave it as 180G because the whole question seems to be in terms of G. 
That was for part A. Now, what do you think is the best thing to do for part B? Do what's yeah, we can go back to what Sufian originally said here. We can say that R equals 70G plus 20G plus MG. We've already done that for this part here. So we've said that R is 180G equals 90G plus MG. So clearly, M is equal to 90. Now, I don't think Luke is 90 kilos. <laughs> 90 kilos is pretty is is larger than Luke is, I think. So you get M is 90. If I wanted to find out Luke's mass, but I didn't, and I wanted to just do it in one equation, what could I have done if that was the only thing I wanted to find out? I wanted to find out Luke's mass right from the beginning. Hamza. Take moments about R. Good. I could take moments about R. This would probably have a name. I might. This isn't actually R. I'd probably have to call this. I don't know, P or C or whatever point. Take moments about the pivot point because obviously R would disappear. You'd then have 20 times 1, 70 times 10, and 8 times M with all the Gs and stuff as well. Okay, so that's how you can do this. You've got to be really careful about where you select. With numbers, it doesn't really matter where you select it. But when we do it with algebra, it is going to matter because you want to make your life as easy as possible. Okay? So I'm going to do one more of these. Um, and then you're going to do some that are to just get harder and harder. Did you want me to leave it on that previous page, anyone? Yep. If you've already done that one and you've written it down, can you just start reading the next question, please? Do you not have any of your stuff? Do you have any of your stuff? No. Yeah. Did you, were you, were you not in when I gave it? I don't think you were, were you? Masumi, do you want one? You'll need one for the exam questions in a second, okay? You can share it, yeah. OK, I'm going to start the next one. If you haven't finished writing it, you can write it up in just a second. So uniform beam, we haven't looked at non-uniform, but we know what that means. Mass 40 kilograms and length 5 meters rests horizontally on supports at C and D, where AC is the same as DB, which is the same as 1. So let's actually just draw the beam to begin with. And we know the whole thing is 5 meters. This is A and B. The distance between A and C is 1. So there's going to be my C here. And the distance between B and D is also 1. So there's three between. Sometimes I don't want to over-label the stuff. I find when I over-label it with too many distances, it can get quite confusing. But that one might be something in a, in a moment we do want to put on. It says, when a man of 80 kilograms stands on the beam at E, the magnitude of the reaction at D is twice the magnitude of the reaction at C. Find the distance AE. So we don't know where e, e is. We need to find out where is E. But this is the most important sentence that we've got here. It says, the magnitude of the reaction at D is twice the magnitude of the reaction at C. So which one is bigger, C or D? D. D is bigger than C because it says it's twice the size of the one at C. Now, you don't have to do them in proportion like this, but this normal reaction is bigger than this normal reaction. It's just told me it's twice the size of this one. So if I call this one R, I better call this one 2R to show that I've understood that relationship between those two things that are there. Now, where do you think the man would be standing to make the reaction at D bigger? Do you think he's standing closer to C or D? He's standing closer to D, and if you think about being the beam, if someone was putting pressure on this part of you, this reaction is going to be bigger. It doesn't really matter where you put it because the maths will sort it out for you, but you do need to, it's, it's good to try and think about where, where should it be. So if I was going to put the man over here closer to D, he might be on the other side, I don't know. I think he's probably going to be on this side because if he went on that side, it's possibly going to be rotating. So let's put him here. And the man has got a mass of 80G. This is my point E that I've got here. Um, 
So I better add some extra things to this diagram. You can see how it's going to start getting pretty busy. What else needs to be added, Hamza? The uniform weight in the middle. The uniform weight in the very middle, which is 40G. Now, this is something where you may like to say what that distance is, but you may like to just say, well, I know it's the, the middle, so I can just figure out what the middle is. And they want us to find the distance AE. My tip to you is if they are asking for the distance AE, label that distance as an unknown. Don't try and find out BE and then do something else. My tip is always use the distance they've given you in the question. So the distance between A and E, I'm just going to call that D or X or whatever you want to call it. Okay. So maybe I can add, add in some extra things. The distance from here to here is 1.5. So you can see if you label all the distances, they start getting super busy really, really quickly. Right. Who thinks they can spot what's the best option to do first? Yeah, Ms. Akir. Moments about D. If you take moments about D, you're going to have an 80G, a 40G, and you're going to have an R as well. You're also going to have some quite tricky distances to work with. I think there's something better that we can do first. Ismail? You can take moments from both and then the You could do moments from both and do simultaneous equations, but I don't know if that's the best option here. I'm looking for the best option. I'm still thinking of something else, yeah. Thank you very much. Best student in the class. Why wouldn't you think about resolving? Why wouldn't you just do up equals down? Look, up equals down. So if we resolve up and down, R plus 2R equals 40G plus 80G. So you get 3R is 120G. So R is 40. Why wouldn't you do that? It's obviously the best one. Yeah? So we come back to the diagram, and you might find it helpful. This is why I want you to do it on the whiteboards, because you need big diagrams, you're going to add information on. So R, we've said, is 40G, which means that this one is 80G. R is 40G, so this one would be double it, 80G, yeah? Now, Anika, where do you think is going to be the best place to take moments if we're trying to find out what the distance AE is? We're trying to find this distance here, which is D. Where would you take moments, do you think? At 40G. At 80G. I, I personally, the reason I wouldn't take it here is because I would need to work out what this distance is. This distance I can work out. Does anyone think they know what this distance from here to here is? 5.5. No, it's, this distance is what? Four. This is 4. So this is 4 minus D. That's not a fun distance to work with, is it? So where's the best place to take moments? A. A is the best place to take moments. Why? Because this is the distance we want to find out. And the distance from A to 80G is already that distance that we're looking for. You can take moments where Anika said. You can take moments where anyone said. But our brains, well, Generally, I found in the last six or seven years of teaching mechanics, you guys are not going to be good at working the distances out as quickly as you should be. Okay? You can do it through practice, and we're going to take moments about somewhere else in a second. But if you take moments about A, you're not going to have any funky, weird distances. Everything is going to be nice. So let's take moments about A. Uh, which are the, let's do the ones on the top first. Okay? So I've got 1 multiplied by R coming from here. Plus this distance. What's this distance? Nope. Four. Plus four multiplied by R. See, you know, it's just the distances are hard to do, but you, they look easy, right? No, the other way around. They look easy. They look hard or whatever. Um, and then we've got 40G multiplied by? Nope. 2.5. And then you get 80G multiplied by D. Okay, so... We've got 1R plus 4R, which is 5R, and R is 40G. So we've got 5 times 40G equals 100G. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So it's, the distance is uh, 4 from here to here. And the size is 2R. So it's 4 times 2R. 
So that's 8R plus R, which is 9R. Uh, and then we've got 100G plus 80GD. 9 times R is 9 times this, which is 360G equals 100G plus 80GD. Now you can tell why we left G in there, right? Because I can cancel the G. I can subtract the 100, so I get 260. And I can divide it by 80 to get what the distance is. Is it exactly 3.25? It's 3.25 meters, OK? Now, 3.25 meters, let's just check that it fitted in with our reasoning that we had there. 3.25 meters is over the halfway point, which is where we thought E would be to make the normal reaction there twice as big as the normal reaction that we have here. So that's definitely, yes, yes, that's definitely going to be the best place for you to take moments about. Now, if you wanted to take moments, from a different place, you'll have to be much more careful about where you take your distances from. So what you've now got on the next, how many pages have we got? One, two, three, four of them. I want you to use this idea to do those exam questions on the whiteboards. Not, we won't be able to do all four. We'll probably be able to do two of them now. And then in about 20, 25 minutes, we'll come back together and do the next set of examples. You'll do then those two extra exam questions for homework.